Okay, let's talk about the unfortunate situation of deaths during exercise or more specifically deaths during events. It's a terrible thing when someone dies during an event. It does happen. Uh, race directors try to do what they can to prevent that and to minimize the risk of death, but it does happen. Detroit 2009, three runners died. 2008, New York City, two runners died. Chicago 2007, even, even Jim Fix, the uh, famous author of the complete book of running, one of the first real comprehensive books on running, died uh, after running. And Ryan Shea, an elite runner, uh, died during the 2007 Olympic marathon trials, which was extremely tragic. So it does happen. It does happen to people. Um, let's talk about this. Well, um, let's talk about the marathon origin, okay, where it's actually a story involves death. And uh, this is Greece. We see Sparta down here. See Athens and marathons. The whole origin of the marathon has to do with this city, Marathon. Um, let's see, Marathon uh, was two, uh, 26 miles, 285 yards from Athens, 42.2 kilometers. Uh, the Marathon is named after the Greek Battle of Marathon in 490 BC. The Persians were attacking Greece. Well, uh, what, what had to happen was uh, the people in Athens needed to uh, uh, be told that there was a battle. So the messenger was Philippides, and he was sent off to Athens to tell them that uh, Persians, the Persians were attacking Greece. So he ran to Sparta, or he ran, uh, sorry, he ran to Sparta from Athens to request help uh, with the per with the when the Persians landed in Marathon. Uh, the Spartans would said that they would help when the moon was full, which meant they didn't really want to get involved right away. So then he ran back to Athens from Sparta, which was about 140 miles each way. And he did this in two days. Then he ran the marathon for the battle. And the battle was run, won, and he ran back to Athens. That's the 40, 40 kilometers. And exclaimed, Nikki Kim Kaman, we have won. And that's the origin of Nike as well. So that's the origin of Marathon was uh, someone dying. Of course, the, the death came after 280 miles here, plus the uh, previous Marathon. Uh, there's an incredible amount of running that the runner did, the, the messenger did that day, plus fighting a battle, all right? So uh, here's just Sparta, yeah, Athens and Marathon and just the logistics. Uh, really, it's the distance here between Athens and Marathon, which was the uh, origin of the Marathon distance. So sudden deaths during a marathon, about 0.8 per 100,000 competitors. Sudden deaths during a triathlon, it's a bit higher, 1.5 per 100,000. Of the 14 deaths over a two-year period, 13 were during the swim. And of the people who had died, when they were able to do autopsies, they were able to identify that there were underlying cardiac problems in most cases of those athletes. Um, interestingly, and I, we've seen some videos of the swim start, uh, often it's harder to get help to a swimmer when they are in distress. Uh, and something that's important here is we can't determine if hypothermia is a cause without knowing core temperature information because that this happened during the swim. So here's just some data, uh, marathon. This is when the sudden cardiac deaths have occurred during a marathon. And you can see that the majority of them happen in the la latter stages of the marathon. What race directors do now is they try to make sure there's a defibrillator at aid stations. And if you're short on defibrillators, you want to make sure that they're more in the second half of the marathon versus the first half. These are some data from uh, triathlon. These are the 14 deaths I mentioned in the previous slide. 13 of those deaths happened in the swim, one on the bike. The event, there's no pattern to the distance that they were doing. Men, more so than women, were dying. And then this just over the year. Uh, this is just uh, additional triathlon data, and this is over uh, the next, uh, this 2010 to 2016. Um, deaths per age group, mostly older men, over 40. Uh, more men dying than women. 
Uh, so primarily older men during the swim and evidence of cardiovascular disease in many of them, not all of them, but many of them. All right, so let's just put this in a context. Uh, motor vehicle uh, collisions are, the num are one of the leading causes of preventable deaths in the U.S. Smoking, uh, obesity, alcohol, infectious disease, motor vehicles, number one in kids nine to 18 years old. All right, these are leading causes, not triathlon, not marathons. Why are people dying during an endurance event? Well, there's, as I mentioned, there's cardiac issues, cardiovascular issues. It may be preparedness, especially in a triathlon, especially during the swim. An open water swim is quite different than swimming in a pool. An open water swim with uh, hundreds, if not thousands of other people is very different than swimming in a pool. So there needs to be a level of preparedness that athletes have. Interestingly, the people who have died, not all of them have been novice athletes. Some of them have been very experienced athletes. Another reason why people are dying in uh, the swim portion of a triathlon is race safety, uh, both in water temperature and, uh, well, if you're gonna die in the bike, it's usually a bike course issue. But in terms of the swim, it's also how the swim is laid out so that, um, so that uh, safety crews can get to distressed swimmers, let alone be able to identify distress swimmers. And then physiology, why people would be dying, uh, thermal regulation, typically um, high core temperature is a big issue. And that can happen in a marathon as well as uh, in the triathlon. Okay, thermal regulation, thermal regulation, why is this an issue? We dealt with this already in this chapter, but it's really important. Uh, chemical energy to mechanical energy is not 100% efficient. It's only about 30% efficient. So that uh, exercise actually generates heat. That heat has to be, um, has to be managed, and, uh, uh, and, and the person needs to keep core temperature down. There's lots of things that will influence uh, the buildup of heat. Uh, intensity of exercise, evaporative loss uh, due to sweat and respiration. Uh, interestingly, uh, and the cooling mechanisms are listed here, death by dehydration, when you hear someone dying from de dehydration, it's usually not during exercise. It's more so during disease and diarrhea where there's lots of fluid loss or vomiting uh, when you're sick. That's when people will become extreme de extremely de dehydrated and uh, that dehydration can lead to death. We know uh, lots of things influence thermal regulation. We covered these, fitness level, acclimatization, uh, age. We didn't touch on this specifically, but age kids versus adults. Kids are less economical than adults. Kids have a greater surface area to weight issue. Kids have a lower slowing, uh, a lower sweating rate and a reduced ability to transfer heat from the core to the body surface. So kids are at greater risk of overheating uh, than uh, even adults. And the problem is when we're dealing with thermal regulation, it's not managing homeostasis for core temperature. Increased core temperature is what we should be focused on when we're exercising in the heat. The response often you need to uh, incorporate, you gotta slow down. You gotta generate less heat by muscle contraction. You've got to continue taking fluids to allow for the sweat rate to, to uh, happen. Uh, continued increases in core temperature can lead to death. Some heat hazards, what are the heat injuries? Well, heat stroke, hyperthermia, characterized by high body temperature, 41 degrees Celsius, 105 degrees Fahrenheit. There's a cessation of sweating, sweating has stopped. Headache, vomiting, fast pulse, rapid recovery, or rapid respiratory rate, shallow breathing, things like that. This is a failure of the heat regulating mechanisms. I had a friend and a colleague who was doing Ironman Kona, and she was in the lead for her age group, and in the last two tenths of the mile before the finish of the run, she collapsed. They took her core temperature, it was 108 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a problem. And she was lucky. She was lucky she collapsed when she did so that she was close enough to the aid station, to med tent, that they could cool her off. The treatment for hyperthermia, get them in an ice bath. Reduce that core temperature as quickly as possible then correct any dehydration or hypoglycemia. She would have been dehydrated at that point, not hypoglycemia. That, that um, or excuse me, hypoglycemia uh, would be low levels of blood glucose. Uh, she may have had problems with that. Uh, I was reading hyponatremia, which would not be an issue for uh, an athlete finishing at that stage. 
Other heat hazards, heat cramps. These are painful spasms, uh, voluntary muscles, calf, hamstring are big muscles that are susceptible to this. The classic hypothesis of heat cramps is due to de dehydration, maybe loss of sodium. However, there's no empirical evidence of that. In fact, uh, a more contemporary hypothesis is that the cramp is an alteration in a neural reflex activity due to fatigue. And there's some other substances that have come out recently that address this and uh, uh, this neural aspect to um, uh, try to m minimize the, uh, the occurrence of a cramp as well as once you have it, trying to stop it. However, the mechanism continues to be uh, not clear. And even here, no difference in electrolyte concentration in runners who developed a heat cramp versus those who did not. So it's not necessarily an electrolyte issue. Heat exhaustion is another hazard. Heat syncope, uh, acute reaction to heat exposure. This is a collapse of an athlete. This would be heavy sweating, paleness, cramps, weakness, nausea, vomiting. Uh, core temperature uh, would not be elevated for heat exhaustion. Treatment is to cool the athlete and treat with fluids. Exercise associated collapse. This is actually really interesting and is probably a big problem uh, in marathons and Ironman where people cross the finish line and they stop moving. And what's interesting is race directors has, have organized the finish line shoots so that when someone does finish the race, they try to keep the person purposefully moving. So they uh, set up things after the finish line that the person has to walk to you know, other aid or getting their medal or getting their shirt. Uh, in Ironman races, they have a volunteer uh, that we call catchers and they catch people across the finish line and they keep the people moving uh, because you don't want to stop moving because then the, the uh, muscle, the, excuse me, the blood will stop flowing to your brain and it pulls in lower extremity. You've, that muscle action has stopped uh, with uh, pumping and helping the circulatory circulation of the blood and the person collapses. Uh, very common in runners to feel lightheaded after crossing the finish line. Um, symptoms are abated by lying down, putting the feet up higher than the heart. This is actually me after Ironman Louisville. I was having that problem. Lie down, drink as needed. You don't need an IV for EAC. There's too much uh, of an overabundance of use of IV after finish line. And uh, if the person doesn't need fluids, you don't need to treat them. And sometimes if you treat someone who's hyponatremic with an IV fluid, you may actually be uh, challenging the system and introducing risk to them. Cold hazards, well, hypothermia, low core body temperature, lean runners who are exposed to cold temperatures for longer times are at greatest risk. Uh, walkers, slow runners, you have to wear appropriate clothing, um, especially when air temperatures are five degrees Celsius or lower. Frostbite is just freezing of a body part. And that's where the blood flow has been uh, cut off and the tissues are exposed to cold temperatures, nose, fingers, toes, uh, so forth. The body's trying to respond and keep that blood flow near the core. Summary, uh, deaths can happen. It's, a, it's terrible, it's tragic. It really um, affects a lot of people. Uh, who have been part of the race, um, primarily happens in the triathlon swim or uh, at the end of a marathon. What to do? Uh, minimize the risk of cardiovascular disease. Take care of yourself, especially older athletes. Uh, you know, even make sure that you're, you're talking with your doctor and having uh, appropriate checkups to make sure that you're not at risk of having an event during a race. For triathlon specifically, learn uh, how to open water swim, expose yourself to open water swim, expose yourself to group swims, get used to other people bumping into you so that that anxiety level does not cause any problem. And then at that point, the race is fun. Okay, thanks everybody.